just want to thank everybody for joining the call. I uh, hope everyone's doing well and staying safe during, during this craziness. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to, to join Jacksonville, and um, I'm re really just looking forward to eventually meeting everyone and developing a relationship uh, going forward. So um, if you guys have any questions, then I'll be here for a while. All right. Thanks, Tyler. We'll start with uh, John Shipley. I, I know you played, uh, you know, for Coach Gruden at the start of your career in Cincinnati. Uh, just w what is it like to kind of play for him in his offense? And how much did his, uh, you know, place here in Jacksonville, how much did that kind of influence you coming to Jacksonville? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a big factor. Um, you know, me and Coach Gruden go back like seven years or eight years, and uh, we, we get along great. And I, I had a good understanding for, for the offense that he runs and uh, a good feel for it. Um, you know, I, I was in the same city for seven years, but we had probably five, four or five different offensive coordinators. So, you know, learning a new offense can be challenging at times. You know, you feel like you're never going to get it. And then eventually over, over time and all the reps, it, it clicks. But just uh, having that familiarity with the offense um, is is really nice. Um, you know, there's there's some new stuff in here, but uh, just being familiar with it and having a, a general general idea of what's going on makes it a lot easier to learn. All right, good deal. Thanks, Tyler. Yep. Thanks, John. We'll go to John Reed. How you doing, Tyler? Uh, good. I wanted to ask you just. How, how do you see yourself emerging in, in Gruden's offense? You know, what what do you think that um, you, you see yourself as a downfield threat, and what what's some of the strengths that you you know you can add as an element to the offense? Also, as a second question. Yeah, I think with with this offense, um, just just knowing all the different positions across the board from every concept to what every guy is doing because. Um, every every concept uh, you could be in one of those different positions, and so just having an understanding of of what's going on, being able to play multiple positions, being able to create mismatches, and uh, and, and given given Coach Gruden the flexibility um, to to move me around and put me in those different positions, along with being able to. Uh, you know, I've never claimed to be a, a great blocker, but I, I've learned a lot over the seven years that I've played um, just how to – just different techniques and how to, how to use leverage and what the defense is doing against them. So, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever, and, you know, I'm excited for the opportunity just to, just to help the team and, and be a leader in the tight end room and on the offense and, and, uh, and play wherever, wherever they – wherever they need me. Thank you. Thanks, John. We'll go to Demetrius Harvey. Hey, Tyler. I appreciate you for doing this, and I hope you and your family are doing well. Um, I was just wondering, because the, the Jaguars sort of have a, a younger tight end group, how do you feel you could – or what do you feel you could bring to the group as a whole as sort of a leader or as a, like a mentor figure in the locker room? Yeah, I, I'm excited to do that. Honestly, um, you know, when I when I first got in the league, and I looked up and saw people going into their seventh or eighth year. I was looked at them like they were super old and never imagined, uh, never imagined actually being in that spot. But time flies, and you, you learn a lot over the years. And for me, being familiar with this offense and uh, understanding, you know, I've I've gone through all the installs once a long time ago, so you know, some of the nuances and, and how it's taught, I, I understand. And and then just a lot of the things that I've learned over the years, um, I look forward to passing on to some of the some of the younger guys and just just helping them out. Was that something the Jaguars sort of talked to you talked to you about before you uh before you signed? Uh not really. I mean it, it's, it's mostly just talks between the front office and, and your agent. I mean, we didn't really, we didn't talk a lot about that, but you know, when I, 
when I looked at the roster, I don't think there I don't think there was anyone well when I signed, there wasn't anyone that was going into their ninth year. There's a couple guys going into their eighth year, which would make me among the, the oldest on the team. So um I kind of kind of figured that out and uh we'll take on that role. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Demetrius. We'll go to Hayes. Hey, Tyler. Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm just curious to get your impressions on Gardner Minshew and what you see out of him as a young quarterback. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've talked to him a couple times on the phone. He seems like a like an awesome dude. Um, you know, he, he's, he's taking charge already. You know, we're, we're doing some group stuff and um, trying to learn the offense. But, you know, just you know, I haven't watched a lot of tape on him, but obviously I saw last year with the with the with the mania going on. Um, he seems like a guy that you know uh, the offense can wants to rally behind. You know, he seems like he's a kind of a fearless leader, and you know you need that when you're on the field and the bullets are flying and things aren't going your way. You, you know, you need that kind of guy to. It's going to take charge of the huddle and be like, we, we got this. And um, so, yeah, I think, I think uh, it'll be, it'll be fun to see his growth from year one to year two and excited to get to work with him. Great. Thank you. Thanks Hayes. We'll go to Mike DiRocco. Hey Tyler. Thank you for uh, taking some time with us. Um, Joe Schobert was talking about sort of how he had to drive back, I think from Wisconsin all the way down to sign his contract. Uh, and it was sort of a huge journey. Did you have any kind of issues like that in terms of coming down here to sign the contract? Did you have to drive down, reapply, or how'd you get here? And any, anything weird about that whole process for you? Not really. I'm, in, I'm down in Delray Beach, Florida, which is only a four hour drive up to Jacksonville. And so, you know, with the facilities not being open, I, just, I, I went to a, I had to go up and take my physical, so I drove up there with my dad and brother and um, did my physical, and then we played We played some golf. I figured if we're going to drive four hours, we might, might as well uh, get something out of it. So played some golf, and then they had my contract. I had, went to a FedEx and printed it out and signed it and sent it back. So it was, it was pretty, pretty painless and uh, – Got to uh, got to play some golf out of it too. Where'd you play? Did you play TPC? At TPC. Yeah. Is that your first time playing the course? Yeah, in person. I played on Tiger Woods golf <laughs> uh, way back in the day, a hundred times or more than that, and uh, you know, seen it on TV <clears throat> in the Players Championship. Uh, so it was pretty cool to see that monstrous clubhouse and actually play some of the holes for for real how'd you do on 17 i hit it in the water over the green you're not was, <laughs> my my adrenaline was racing they still had the the grandstands up and everything it was pretty cool thanks bud yep uh thanks mike we'll go to mark long all right i'm gonna be the uh jerk who asked about your injury history but uh, I'm sure you're sick of it, but uh, playing 16 games, how big was that for you uh, to kind of get over that hurdle? And what, is it, what did it mean for you moving forward? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great to play all 16 games, just staying, staying in that grind with the team, that, that process throughout the season. Um, you know, it's, it's a long year and it's a grind, but – uh, just to just to go through all that with the guys was was awesome. You know, I've I've had some bad luck with injuries. That was, that was my first 16 game season, which is pretty crazy. But once I once I did get through it, I'm like, it, I I thought it was a lot easier than you know than I than I expected. It's just it's not easy, but I can't figure out why why I had to keep getting hurt because um, it would have been nice to to uh, play a lot more full seasons, but 
you know, you just you just roll with the punches. It's it's a violent game. It's a dangerous sport, and um, you know, I I just always try to control what I can control and give my best effort on the field and put myself in the best position to succeed. And uh, if I had a setback, then 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 you deal with it and and you get better and you come back the next year. So uh, it was. It, it, it was good to play all 16 games, though. Do you feel like it was a breakthrough for you personally or maybe even psycholo psychologically, mentally? Not really. I think every every injury that I've had, once I get back to full full go, you know, I, it, it's out of my mind. I'm not even thinking about it again. And, um, you know, there's certain things that I have to do, you know, that, with all the injuries, you know, just to make sure my body's feeling good. And I, I've learned over the years how to, how to get myself ready to play and th things that I can do to help, help prevent injuries and, and those types of things. But once you step on the field, I mean, there's no, there's no thinking about getting hurt or anything. I'm just, I'm, I'm balls to the wall, full go. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we'll go to Mike Girardi. Just if I could piggyback off that, you know, we've seen some situations where guys, Marshall Yanda being most recent, who said, like, I just – being in the cycle of the rehab, trying to play, rehab, trying to play, that he said, I just couldn't do it anymore. Did you ever get to a point where you're thinking, like, I don't know if I want to do this part of it anymore? Uh, I mean, a, a little bit. You get, you get to a point where – you know, instead of your off season being being an opportunity to get better and be in the best physical shape you can possibly be going into a season, you uh, you end up just you're rehabbing and trying to just get healthy enough to play. Which, you know, you're you're behind most of the other guys who have been, you know, getting better and getting faster and getting stronger. And I'm I'm sitting there just trying to make sure that my ankle feels good enough to to run so you know going through a rehab two years ago playing a full season and now having a full off season to to get my body ready and to, and to get better as a player I think will be will be huge going into this year and, and another question for you just was when you were kind of going through the process of free agency was it important to you to stay in the division just because maybe you know obviously familiarity of of knowledge, Gruden being the OC, but just the opponents you play on a weekly basis. Uh, no, you don't. I mean, you don't really think about the the division or the conference or any any of those things. You're just you're trying to find a good fit for yourself and, and a team that uh, you know is go, is going to be good. Um, and then just some of that familiarity with the offense, I think, was also a, a big factor. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Uh, okay. Back to Demetrius. Hey, Tyler. Um, how different has this virtual offseason been for you guys, and what have you sort of been able to get out of it so far? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been, unlike anything I've ever done with all these virtual meetings and installing plays on 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 FaceTime and Zoom. Um, you know the. the I think the hard thing about it is there's so much uncertainty and with, with your training and, you know, you, you want to, you try to stay in shape the best you can, but at the same time, if, if we're not going to report for OTAs, we have to be ready to go for camp. Then, you know, you don't want to peak too early or, you know, be going too hard for too long. You know, it's like a Olympic sprinter or whatever, you know, that, they want to peak at the right time, so they're they're at their best shape, and they're not declining before they before they have to run. Not trying to stay in shape. I am staying in shape, but um, you know, just having good balance within your workouts, and and then uh, just it, all the responsibilities on you to learn the offense and, and keep up because there's no one sitting there making you sit in meetings or or do any of that stuff. So. Uh, that's probably about it. Yeah, um, Joe Schobert sort of talked about going to a, a local field to work on his um, 
just his condition and, and, and everything like that. Have you been sort of going outside a little bit to get on the field and, and figure out the, the install packages and everything like that by yourself? Uh, no, I, I, as far as the install packages, I've just been mostly, mostly on paper and on the, on the iPads. Uh, I, I just go to the field to run. Uh, there's a nice park here close that it's easy to get to. So being able to just stay in shape and, and running and cutting and doing those types of things. Okay. Uh, Tyler, I, after, you know, spending the entirety of your career, you know, with one team in one city, just is it kind of weird to be transitioning to a new place? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, you know, when you're you're playing with a team and, and you've been with them for that long, you just kind of – you expect to be there forever. And that's just not the way that it works for most of the guys. And, um, you know, I, it was probably – Probably a good thing just to just to get a fresh start with a new team and uh, try to build from there. But yeah, it is it is a little bit weird. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. Yeah, and just I mean, when you're with a team for that long, you you know every single person that works in the building. You know, from the equipment staff <clears throat> to the training staff to the people that work in the kitchen and uh, so along with all the players and the relationships that you build, so it'll, it'll, um, it'll definitely be different and I'm excited, excited to meet, meet a lot of the, the people in the building and, uh, my new teammates. Thanks, John. We'll finish up with Cassidy. Hey, Tyler, you mentioned talking with Gardner a few times and some of the group things that y'all had arranged. What do those group things look like? How do they come about? Is is there like a group text message or what's, what's going on? Yeah, there's like, we have group text messages and then we'll get together on the, the platform that we use um, with the team for video conference and just kind of go over plays. It's, you know, the, be the best way to learn the offense is to get out on the field and hear the play called in the huddle. And then you have to, you have to break it down in your head, figure out where to line up and what route to run and obviously we can't do that right now and so you're you're kind of studying on your own on paper and and so some of these group things is just you know getting all the guys getting them all together on the video conferences and hearing a play and and then uh knowing where to where to line up and what your responsibility is so i think it's just just a way to get the guys together and uh another way to, to learn the offense, get everyone on the same page.